place. Well, you know, what's the criterion? What's that? What's the criterion? What would make well, it sit in uh, corn culture and all that? Well, that's the idea, or some people would suggest that there's a certain constellation of, of beliefs that you can see in the material culture, uh, almost like a Mississippian religion, uh, the amount of ceremonial is an important part of it. Uh, but not the only part of it, because in fact there's other people that were at the same time doing things on the mounds, they weren't Mississippians. Look at the cattle, for example. They're not Mississippians, but they built square mounds and they you know, did corn agriculture and things like that. But there seems to be a different cosmology in, in the long run. And that's only you know, by studies of modern day, or not modern, but a contact ethnohistoric accounts and through the history of like the, the Cherokee and the Creek and the Choctaw. What you're looking at is you generally equate Mississippian uh, culture with not exactly some differences as a generalization to say the Muscogee speakers of the southeast, which Choctaw, Creek, Cherokee, Chickasaw, and they all have a certain ideas about the way the world was and society was structured in similar manners and, and things like that. So we take those analogies and apply those to here because the people here had square mounds, corn agriculture. You know, so in some ways it's a stretch, but it's the only analogy we actually have. So in some ways it's not too bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's the nature of our, our, our beast. You know, I'm looking at dirt. I guess. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm looking at dirt, and then I got to go to cosmology from dirt. And in fact, you know, the Shiloh Mounds in, in Tennessee, um, they were, the Mississippians there were decorating the mounds with different colored dirts. So they had some mounds that were pretty decent sized. I don't remember exactly how tall, maybe 12 meters, um, that would be covered with bright red dirt. You know, you'd have bright white dirt. So, important is because Mississippian societies generally were separated from, you know, had moiety divisions. It's halves of society. It was either the red moiety or the white moiety. You know, they, they were born and that's how you became, that's how you belonged in society. But they also had clan systems. It could be, you know, like a wolf in the red red moiety with a wolf clan or a wolf clan in the white moiety. So there, there were societies with these incredibly complex organizations that uh, in general we don't think about. You know, we think about tribe with the chief from the top down. But when you really think about that, that's a Western social model applied in a situation yeah. that there's no reason to, to do that. You know, we accept that if you know when DeSoto came through the southeast, we saw people living on top of the mounds and we assumed they were chiefs and since the you know King of Spain had all these certain powers, certainly these people were kings of their own societies. Uh, yeah, it's sort of an involved argument when you look at the social structure and social organization. You see these other structures outside of just pyramidal you know, kingly structures. Of some you may have had two chiefs, three chiefs, four chiefs. You, know, you could have had as many, everybody could have been a chief. You know? They, they may have organized their society according to the calendar rather than social status. Who's in charge of what? Well, what time of the year is it? And who's, whose plan is supposed to be doing this? So that's how society was organized rather than, you know, this is what the king wants us to do.